And so to begin our, our ceremony, we are gathered here, of course, to remember our classmate and our friend Tom Roper. We were all growing back then, but Tom especially so. I'm sure you remember the, the junior high Roper, the black leather motorcycle jacket and the toothpick hanging out of his mouth. Then came Tom Roper, star athlete, excelling at track and especially football. Roper left more than a few linebackers wondering what was the license number of that uh, halfback. After that, of course, came Tom Roper, leader on the debate team, junior class president, student body president, and some may not know this, his first year at Lincoln University in Jefferson City, freshman class president as well. Since we both wound up in radio, I kept in touch with Tom for a while back then. I remember him still in his 20s as general manager of KWK Radio in St. Louis, a position most people never get in radio, and, and then not till their 40s or 50s. Tom, of course, blazed a few trails. He knocked down a few doors and barriers, and we are honored today to remember him. At uh, this time, I would like very much for Vanita Ray Smith to uh, come forward and tell us a bit about how this entire observance came to be. It's quite a story. Ray? Thank you, Jimbo. Well, I think I've been in touch with everyone, but for the, for the film, here it goes. Tom and I have been talking for years, and I think he's called all of us through the, through the ages. And we'd just get carried on, and we'd do a half an hour, sometimes an hour, and we'd just have memory after memory, and modern day stuff too. So a couple of weeks before Tom passed, he had called, left me a message. And all of our messages, when we left them, it always ended with, love you. So that was the last time I heard Tom's voice. And then I got the call from Sylvia. And our prince, of course, had to have a princess, and that's Sylvia. And we're happy that she's with us today. And throughout the funeral service, yes. Throughout the service, I was downloading pictures from the yearbook and pictures that I had taken from the school. <laughs> and uh, so I had a lot of originals, if you'll recall. And I sent those and was able to get everything to her. And she said, I know Tom wanted to be cremated, but did he tell you where he wanted his ashes? And I said, no, but he ought to be with his mama Maggie in the Lebanon City Cemetery. She said, Sylvia said, oh, that's wonderful. You know, Maggie loved him. And when he strided into school in the seventh grade up there and those starched Levi's, those beautiful starched and iron-colored shirts. Man, he was about the handsomest thing that came to school. And I hear the story, Eddie tells me, that after that, every boy in school wanted their Levi's creased and <laughs> ironed as well. So, But Maggie was quite a lady, and I was blessed to be home when she passed away. And the church house was full, the yard was full, and the love that was going out for that woman is something and of course she had to have a wonderful son and that's our Tom and I really I'm a better person because I loved him and I've known him since the fifth grade when I my horse <laughs> Tennessee Walker and Frank Meacham's horse were brothers so we practiced and rode together. Martha will remember all this. And we'd ride, we'd get ready for her shows, and Frank had a truck. And of course, I was just, what, fifth grade, so at the horse shows, Mom and Pop let me run all over this community with Frank Meacham and me and those horses. We won, I was written up in all the, the papers, Frank Meacham and little Ray Smith out there riding their horses. So. Uh, of course I knew Tom, and the other thing, I'd ride my bike down, I loved basketball, and uh, the schoolhouse down there, they kept it warm in the winter time, and I'd ride my bicycle down there and play basketball with the guys, mm -hmm. and uh, I was usually the only girl, so <laughs> that's the way it goes, and we all love Tom, I think, and I love all of you guys, we've been a special group of people. We've made a mark in the world and been good people. And that's all life's about. Love you all. Thank you very much, Ray. Love you too, Love you too Ray. All right.
There were some who were not able to be here who did send uh, their thoughts about uh, Tom Roper, and I wanted to share a few of those uh, with you as well. Uh, from Patty Hickson, my memories of Tom, like so many of us, uh, were his clothes that were so clean and pressed with creases. Yeah, I know that his mother was a special woman and taught him how to relate to others and be respectful of everyone he came in contact with. Tom and others became part of our school life when the schools were integrated, and I, for one, am very glad that this happened because it gave us the opportunity to know and appreciate Tom and others who were from that separate community within our town. We were blessed to have known him and graduated with him in our class. Also, uh, I had the opportunity to have phone conversations with Tom about a year ago. It was fun to get caught up with him. He was a key part of the LHS class of 62, and he will be missed. Nobody ran the quick pitch right or quick pitch left better than Tom Harold Evans. Uh, Vanita Ray, I'm so sorry to hear about Tom's passing. I always remember him as being a very outgoing and pleasant person. He was a class act. I'm sorry, too, that you have lost a good close friend. I'm sure he will be missed by many. Take care, Ann Harrison Krebs. And uh, other names that uh, come forward here. So sad to hear about Tom. I was so glad to talk with Tom on the phone at our last reunion and sending our prayers to his family, Dixie Strickland Bibby. And from a Jackson Harrell. In 1987, using an address from that year's reunion booklet, I sent a Christmas card to Roper. I don't think I'd seen him since his wedding in Tulsa. Anyway, I don't think any more about it until at some ungodly hour on New Year's morning, the telephone rang very loudly. <laughs> I may have celebrated a bit the night before. When I managed to get to the phone and answer it, the deep, resonant voice said, Good morning, Happy New Year. <laughs> That's all the voice said. No name, nothing else, just a hearty good morning booming through the fog. My first thought was, who the hell could this be? <laughs> then the voice registered, so I mumbled into the phone, Roper, why the hell are you calling at this hour? Do you know what time it is? And in typical Roper form came back a chuckle followed by, this will teach you to send out Christmas cards. <laughs> we had a great conversation, the first in a long string of those that lasted until a week or two before he died. When I visited Tom in Pasadena a couple of years earlier, it was like no time had passed. We took up where we'd left off decades earlier. One of the things we reminisced about was how Vanita Ray always beat the two of us shooting baskets in my backyard while she was skipping her piano lessons at Mrs. <laughs> Clark's house next door. Tom was a good friend, and I've always been happy he beat my ass for student body president. <laughs> it was a very positive moment, in my opinion, for me, for Lebanon, and for all of us. Tom made a mark that we celebrate even now, 55 years later. But more than anything else, he was a good friend who took delight in giving you an early wake-up call on a New Year's morning. Jackson Harrell. There you go. Jackson withdraw his I don't recall. Uh... No, oh, there was an actual election. He did ask it to be made unanimous, as I recall. All right. Now, uh, there are others, I understand, here who would, uh, would like to have a word to say as well. And I think uh, Gerald Carter might be one of those people. Would that be right if you could come up, uh, Gerald? Probably easier to have people. Oh, wait, but before, before, yeah, go ahead with you, and then I want to ask Linda Burton, uh, uh, Merrick, to say something as well. But, uh, but first, uh, uh, we'll hear from, uh, from Gerald Carter. Come on over here. Well, as you will recall, some of us didn't get to be in school together until junior high. There was Hillcrest and Maplecrest and Washington and the Catholic school. And so I didn't really get to know Tom until much later. And really, though I knew about him, his uh, football and athletic prowess. I really didn't get to know Tom very well until he was in speech and debate. And so, uh, so a few years ago I got a phone call out of the blue. And so I write poetry once in a while and this is my remembrance of Tom. A remembrance on the passing of Tom Roper. Tom unexpectedly called me up a number of years ago. 
His voice, as I remembered, it hadn't been quite so low. We talked some of our past and exchanged a little news and found a mutual love and interest in music, especially the blues. He invited me to visit sometime if I was ever out his way. I told him I had no current plans to be traveling soon to L.A. I felt from him, I felt from him a sense of searching, a reaching for a connection. I was still working, caught up in my own concerns, but now upon reflection, I wonder just why he called, but I never really asked. But whatever the motive was, I just sincerely hope I passed. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you very much. Uh, Linda, Linda Burton Merrick, would you come forward? Uh, uh, Linda had something that she wanted to add to this, uh, this observance, this gathering. I just want you all to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't need to say anything else, do I? <laughs> yes. For those who don't remember, why don't you tell the story, Linda? Well, it, I was, uh, Tom, I, don't remember. <laughs> I, I, was, I was very honored that Tom Roper crowned me basketball queen, and, and the kiss was the issue, so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> So, but I just, I just looked up to Tom so much. He was just such a, a special, special person that we had in school. So. Thank you, Lynn. I would add, since I was a little part of that story as well, something that we uh, might as well remember to make sure that history is correct. There was indeed a little issue when uh, Tom was elected student body president. There were apparently a few who had... Uh, suddenly realized that one of the duties of the student body president was to, uh, to kiss the, uh, the basketball queen and present her with some flowers. Uh, and I will tell you, I'm not sure how many of you know this, I was approached to defuse the situation as student body vice president. And I said, I said, no, we have a student body president who's quite capable of fulfilling the duties of office. And uh, so, anyway, uh, we've all grown. In, uh, in 55 years. And uh, yes, absolutely. You, 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 you had a thing you wanted to add. Oh, I, I was not aware of that. Uh, I was sort of asking. I knew about Gerald, and now I know about uh, Billy Lopeman Nelson. Well, why don't you come forward and, uh, and offer what it is you have to say, Billy? And anyone else I might add, don't be shy, because I, I don't know of anyone else. So if you wish to say something, now's the time to let us know. Well, for a long time, I felt special and privileged because I would get these calls from Tom. And my husband got a few of them I, a little later down the line. And as I learned many times over with our reunions and so forth, a lot of people were getting calls <laughs> from Tom. <laughs> but one thing he said, well, a couple of things he said. One time he talked about coming back and living either in Lebanon or Springfield. And I actually contacted some uh, real estate agents that I knew, and I think I gave him the name of somebody. But the special thing that he said to me was that his mom and my mom were friends. And that was very special to me that my mother was a servant, a civil servant, a city collector for 35 years, and she treated everyone alike. And that was validated by Tom's comment. So he was special to many people. Amen to that. Thank you, Billy. I would. Uh as long as we're being totally candid here, I feel it necessary to point out that, that when approached about the basketball queen situation, I did hesitate for at least a second, knowing that I was passing up my last chance ever to kiss Linda Burton. But uh, there, was, there, was a right, there was a right thing to do. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Ray. Yes, I certainly have. That's right. And they're all sorry today, Tom. Now... Uh, if, if, if we could have Vanita Ray, uh, did someone else wish to speak? All right, if, if Vanita, oh yeah, Sylvia, would you like to say something? Okay. 
I'm not a very good speaker. But. Well. <laughs> no, but Tom talked about his classmates and so forth. I'm sorry. No, just you go right ahead. I'll okay. just close it under your mouth. Here. Okay, and the gentleman over here that said that he... Um, they had the same interest as far as jazz was concerned or blues. He has a really, really good collection, and that's what we used to argue about. I kept saying, stop spending money on all of this <laughs> and, it, and on the stereo equipment. So he started getting the stereo equipment all in black, so I couldn't notice if there was a difference. <laughs> and I had to come home and like count each piece to see what he had added. You know? <laughs> no, but he really, really was a, a good person. We met in college years ago. And we were just really, really good friends. And I remember when he got married and then they had problems and I talked him into going back. I said, you, you guys are really young, you should try it again. And they, I, then they finally got a divorce. And then he came out to California to see me. He said, I just came out here to make your life a miserable hill. <laughs> you know, like, because you told me to go back. <laughs> no, but, and then we've got a couple of dogs and they still miss him. I have one little dog that still sits at the front door, oh, you know, yeah. uh, looking for him, so. No, but he really, really was a great guy. And I was going to tell you that our other condo we used to live in, we had like 42 units. Well, when people would go on vacation, Tom had retired, when people would go on vacation, they would ask him to keep their key or check on their place in case something happened. When we moved, we he had to return 27 keys, you know, <laughs> because all these people trusted him so much, you know, with their place. Yeah, but he was really, really a light guy, and he really is missed, you know. So, but thank you so much. Thank you, Sylvia. At this time, I believe that uh, Vanita Ray has something to tell us about uh, Tom Roper's ashes. Would this be the appropriate time, Ray? I we're, I believe, and then after that with uh, the roses, I think we're at that point, I believe. All right. Um, I just briefly mentioned that uh, Sylvia agreed that uh, his ashes should be with Maggie. And yesterday when I picked her up, she confirmed Tom is with us. So it goes back to that time when you, we decided to do that. And then I couldn't help but decide, we need to put a stone out there. We need to remember Tom. Jackson Harrell later said we maybe ought to put it at the high school. Said no, the, they could build another new school. We, <laughs> we know it's going to be here. <laughs> right? And so the design and what I did was all confirmed, verified, approved by the family, and it didn't take very long to raise the money to get it done. And thank you, I should have made a list of all of the donors, but it's all of us. We don't need the list, no, we are the list. And we'll carry, on. we'll carry on, as Annabelle said. Tom's work is done and we're all better people because of it, and we're gonna scatter his ashes today right down those eight feet along with Maggie and then and then, and then, and then I gather we will each place a rose and then we will each place a rose on top so yeah. all of you who would like to help carry Tom please let's all join together and do it very good Don't you? all right fantastic all right so uh, great job, Ray. Oh. yes you here 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 to Vanita Ray Smith who, who, after all these years, finally developed some class spirit. We haven't heard it, and this will probably be our last opera. No, not back there, up here where everybody can hear it. All of those who cannot be with us will now get to hear another story. Another, this is a horse story. This is Kept them down, on, kept my pony dimples and my Tennessee Walker road agent down around, that past Ash. We were down on Tuscumbia Road, seventh grade. Remember those big circle skirts and all those can-cans that were yes. underneath them? You get the picture? Long sleeve shirt and ironed. Well, I was dressed like that. Somebody called, said, somebody's down there messing with your horses. Well, I could sometimes run home for lunch, and I did that day. So I got the phone call. Mom drove me out there like the devil. I saw this kid heading toward 
Highway 5. I started chasing him. <laughs> I chased him. I chased this guy. Crossed 5. We went through. Chased him. Uh, just the sweat. It was hot. All the way through Smith Acres. All the way to the football field. That had to be at least three miles. Two miles. Isn't it? Yeah. And I got down there and lost him. Well, I'd remembered that story forever, and I had to get, go home, change clothes, get back to school. About two years ago, Tom and I were talking about the times I rode and how we got to know one another and all this when we had fifth grade. I said, well, you know the funniest thing, and I told him this story. He said, Ray, I've never wanted to tell you that, anything, but that was me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I knew if you caught me, you'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace. Appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. Tis grace that brought. Me save thus far, and grace will lead us home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. And now our benediction with Stanley Burgess. Before I even uh, came here, and knowing what we were going to do, I had this. Uh, How about that? People want to hear you. They do. They may have to wait till we get the tape to hear me. <laughs> but I'm hoping I project enough uh, for you folks to hear. But I was thinking about an old barn uh, out south of town here. The old barn used to shelter uh, the livestock, uh, the equipment. Children used to play in the loft, and it just sheltered everyone around and provided what it needed to to accommodate their needs. But one day, the children grew up and moved away. The old folks died, and the barn just sat derelict and alone, still trying to survive, hoping it would be needed at some point, till one day it just crumbled to its knees, Finally, in one last gasp to rise, it just finally settled in one big heap. And today, if you drive out by where the old barn is, there's no sign of it, and it's been bulldozed under, and it's gone. And its service is gone. Well, I thought about that, and I realized that, like that barn, we're soon going to be gone. And no one, all men, all women, want to be remembered. Just something in us that when we pass, we want to be remembered. Well, 
this marker is going to do that for Tom. He's going to be remembered. I remember the uh, children of Israel when they crossed through the waters. Remember they had to gather 12 stones, carry them up there, and they said, well, in years to come when the children ask what do these mean, you can tell them God did this. And so we'll have succeeding generations will come in here and they'll stand by this marker. And they'll look at that and they'll say, what does this mean? And the story will have been passed along and the answer from the parents, from the grandparents will be such as, let me tell you about this about the class of LHS 1962 and Thomas L. Roper. And so this is a place we'll all come back to. And generations in the future, I hope they come here as well to get the story of what this day really means. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this day, for the significance of it, and all we can do in a prayer of benediction is just say, we want to hallow this ground. We want it to be a sacred place. We want it to be a place where we can come and realize that uh, not only do we honor Tom Roper, but we honor everyone else who was a part of his life and who benefited from his life and who really were trendsetters, were ahead of the time, and we just thank you that uh, maybe while Martin Luther King is uh, renowned and famous, what happened here in this little town, in this high school, was just as significant and momentous as anything that happened across our country. So we thank you. We want you to bless these people, bless our memory of Tom and this spot. And we're going to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.